Welcome to our lesson about the derive part command. In my graphic area, I've got a plate with four holes. This part was saved in the folder for lesson 19. Let's begin by creating a new part. And let's go to the Manage tab. On the Insert panel, let's select the Derive tool. Inventor asks us which part to open. I'll choose the plate and click Open. The Derived Part dialog window opens and it's got a number of options. We can choose a derived style. The first option is Single Solid Body Merging Out Seams Between Planar Faces. The second option is to create a solid body and keep the seams between the planar faces. Let's use the third option. This maintains each solid as a solid body. We also have the option to extract the work surfaces by clicking the fourth icon. Next, we've got the option to include or exclude components. Let's expand the Solid Bodies folder. Here we see that Solid 1 is selected for inclusion. Next, we can also incorporate the scale factor by entering a value in this field. For example, compensating for shrinkage during the molding process. Lastly, we can check here to mirror the part that we're deriving. And if you select this option, you need to select a plane as well. Let's uncheck the mirror option. And let's click OK. Now let's save our part. Click on the Save icon in the Quick Access toolbar. I'll call it Plate 2. And save. Now when I expand the tree, we see the solid body here. Let's start by changing its color. We'll use green, for example. And let's add some fillets. I'll select this edge, apply, and cancel out. As you can see, I'm able to edit the solid body. Right click and done. Finish the sketch. And OK to accept our extrude. Now, in order to edit the underlying geometry, I need to go back to the source file. Let's edit the holes diameter, for example. Let's make it a quarter inch instead. Accept. Exit the sketch. Update the part. Now if I want to include the sketch from the original part, for example, Sketch 2, I'll just right click on it and select Share Sketch. Let's edit the sketch. Let's add some geometry here. OK. Let's go back to the derived part. Right click, Edit Derived Part. Now we see the plus symbol next to the sketch. Inventor gives us a warning. Selecting a non-exported object will modify the base component to mark the object. Let's click OK. And OK again. Now Sketch 2 appears in the Design tree. Let's double-click on it. As you see, we can't modify the sketch, but we're able to use it as reference geometry. Let's finish the sketch. And let's go back to the base part. Let's export some parameters now. Manage tab, Parameters. In order to enable the export, parameters need to be selected here. Let's also create a custom parameter, we'll call it A1. And let's enter a formula here, for example, D1 multiplied by D3. Click outside the cell to register. And the units are inches. Let's check this parameter as well. Click Done. And let's return to Plate 2. Update. Now right-click Edit Derived Part. And let's expand the Parameters folder. 
Let's select these parameters, as well as the user parameter, and click OK. Let's go back to Parameters on the Manage tab. Now we see the parameters we selected under User Parameters. Notice that I can't select or make any changes. Here's our custom parameter, A1. Let's click Done. To break a link with the base part, we just right-click and select Break Link with Base Component. We're also able to suppress the link with the base component as well. Let's break the link. Now the Break Link icon appears here, and Sketch 2 has changed color. Let's right-click and edit the sketch. Now we need to add dimensions and relations in order to fully constrain the sketch. Let's finish the sketch. And this concludes our lesson about the derive command.